In the heart of the Adirondacks, Patrick Cunningham stood as a legendary figure known for his daring rafting adventures. He had a reputation built over decades pioneering the Hudson River Gorge's whitewater rafting in the late 1970s. However, by 2010, whispers of trouble began to swirl around his once-respected operation. It all began with a summer outing for Camp Marasha, an Orthodox Jewish youth camp. Cunningham guided the group down the Hudson River Gorge, but things quickly spiraled into chaos. As the rapids surged, the raft struggled to stay afloat. With fewer guides than needed, a raft fell behind, and the campers were left fighting exhaustion in the powerful current. It was a moment of sheer panic, the kind that turns excitement into dread. Cunningham made it back to safety with the group, but questions about his judgment remained. Two days later, the situation intensified. Cunningham's Hudson River Rafting Company sent a father and daughter from Georgia into the rapids of the Indian River in inflatable kayaks, unguided and unprepared for the waters ahead. The kayakers were repeatedly thrown into the frigid river, overturning several times within the first three miles. After battling the waves and cold, they abandoned the trip and walked back to the starting point, shaken but unharmed. These incidents drew the attention of local authorities who saw Cunningham's actions as reckless, bordering on negligence. Rumors of a growing outlaw culture at his company surfaced, and in 2012, the charges of reckless endangerment reached the courtroom. Judge S. Peter Felstein warned Cunningham that if the behavior alleged was true, crimes had indeed been committed. Cunningham maintained his innocence, viewing the river's challenges as part of the adventure, a notion that intrigued some and worried others. In the midst of this legal turmoil, tragedy struck. On a crisp September morning, 53-year-old Tamara Blake set out on a rafting trip with Cunningham's company. The river was high and the rapids were fierce. As they navigated the torrent, the raft capsized, tossing Blake and her guide, Rory Fay, into the water. Fay, who later admitted to being intoxicated, managed to survive, but Blake did not. The river, both beautiful and unforgiving, claimed her life. This incident intensified the scrutiny on Cunningham and his company. Stories of inexperienced guides, mildew life vests, and guides needing frequent on-river assistance painted a grim picture of a business that had once been the pride of Adirondack adventure tourism. Despite the mounting evidence, Cunningham had his defenders. In the world of whitewater rafting, risk was an inherent part of the experience, and many argued that no amount of caution could remove the river's dangers. The legal battle raged on. Cunningham faced multiple charges and his business practices were called into question. The judge demanded changes, warning Cunningham that further violations would lead to severe consequences. Yet the tension persisted. In 2012, a customer recounted how Cunningham had abruptly stepped out of a raft during a trip leaving clients to fend for themselves for the last three miles. While they were in relatively calm waters, the sense of abandonment and fear was palpable. The story of Patrick Cunningham is a complex one, full of drama, risk, and the unpredictability of nature. It embodies the struggle between the thrill of adventure and the need for safety. As the legal battles continue, Cunningham stands at a crossroads, facing the reality that the river's untamed power demands respect and that thrill-seeking cannot come at the cost of lives. 
This story of Patrick Cunningham and Hudson River Rafting Company illustrates the clash between adventure and safety. On one side, rafting enthusiasts argue that risk is part of the thrill, something Cunningham deeply believed in. On the other hand, authorities and families emphasize the need for safety especially when lives are at stake. It's a story that challenges us to consider where the balance lies between freedom and responsibility. What do you think? Should adventure sports be regulated more strictly or is risk part of their essence? Sleep well, folks, and may you wake to a beautiful morning.